It's another beautiful day here at the Lauderdale Marine Center. And although it may seem like just another day at the office for the Fosters team, today is something special. And who knows, today might actually be a good day at Fosters. You guys got me. Okay, that's hard to do. <laughs> there you go. Hey, buddy. Hey, guys, Gary. What are you doing? <laughs> what do we got over there? Little donkey. 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 From my daughter. I'm another year older, you know, when you get my age, it's just almost like another day that just somebody else celebrates, not yourself. But I'm happy, I'm a little bit more wiser, I've made it through another year, and let's see what the next year has to offer. And how many people are gonna tell me, no, you can't do it. Look at that, that that's when we're one. making faces, guys. Oh my gosh, that's priceless. Thank you, sweetie. Look at that, that is unbelievable. Boo boo. He don't want to laugh. I mean, if you can't make he's a baby tired. laugh, hello. He, he's, but he's not for his name, but he's... And I'm like, okay, you had some cake. Can we get back to work? And just like that, it's back to work. It's been several weeks since we've last seen Aria, and the masterminds of the Fosters team have been doing what they do best, making miracles happen. came in on a wing and a prayer and this diesel expert showed me the engine and he's like look man this is unsafe dangerous and you barely made it best case scenario this engine would overheat it on you guys you would probably burn up the sc50 on this because the oil runs so low and then you just have water in it you don't have no gear loop Water settles to the bottom, so your bottom gears are just having water and no lubrication. And we didn't know because those coils at the top. Bingo. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop the sail drives. We're going to check out the bearings. Most likely, we're going to replace the bearings if we got wear and tear on them. We're also going to look at the seals and make sure the seals are good and the health of those seals. If they're even close to being having a little wear and tear while we have the sail drive down, just put new bearings and new seals in them and put them back up and then you're done for another five to eight years. Yeah, it's supposed to be a light blue, but right now this is so milky and black. And for the texture of it, it's very, 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 very thick. Oh, it doesn't sound good at all. Bearings are short, so might need a new shaft, new bearings. The gear probably still good, but bearings are short. That's what happens when you don't change your oil on time and take care of your sail drives. That right there. Change the oil. Notice this engine you know, over here, which is the port side. There's no coolant inside the heat exchanger, so I'm guessing it's leaking. It has to leak somewhere. It needs to be checked. The sea cork on this side needs to be changed. The sea cork on that side needs to be changed. So there are a lot of little knickknacks that needs to be done and taken care of on the engine side of it. All in a day's work. After we put the sail drives back in, we're gonna put our two-part prop speed on there. We put prop speed on a lot of the underwater gear, both rotating, turning, and fixed. We put the etching primer on first, and then the clear anti-fouling over that after, but you don't see hardly any barnacle growth on that. It's a really good product for those sail drives. Got a lot of things going on here. They got some damage up in the front that they're dealing with, but uh, we're gonna take care of it one at a time. Get this guy out of here so we can beat it up again and we'll get it back next year because it's breaking everything. We did notice that one of the nets in the bow sprit seems to have cracked on the bow where the net is not secured. We're gonna go through, put some backing behind the bolts that go through the bow to make sure it never comes off again. 
the deck looks just really old. In a different scenario, people would probably say, let's replace the teak deck, which would cost about 15 to 18,000, maybe a little bit more these days. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrub and clean the teak decks and I'm gonna sand it with a couple different grades of sandpaper. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna put a couple coats of teak sealer on there. Not too much to where it's slippery, but just so it soaks into the wood grain and preserves the look and the finish. And I'll have those decks looking brand new that you'll think I put brand new decks now. Breadboard is a special compacted fiberglass that's kilned and it withstands over 10,000 pounds of force. What we're gonna do for him is we're gonna add breadboard shoes underneath the keel. Once the shoe is glassed in, we wrap fiberglass onto the actual existing keels. Next time he beaches the boat, he's gonna be beaching on that breadboard. There'll be no chance of damage to the actual fiberglass. I wanna take out the lifelines. I wanna put brand new ones in there with the clips that are nice and tight, that are not sagging, and it looks nice, white, protected, and tight. When you go to the stern, those sugar scoops have a rubber cover on them. Those covers were not glued on properly. We're just gonna rip them off, go back with new. So another item we noticed is that he has an aluminum door that can barely open or close. It lifts, it's up, you gotta kinda move it. And it just takes a lot of work. It doesn't have a locking mechanism on it. So basically you can just walk right in the door. The other side of it opens as a window and it's just really, really difficult, especially when it's all corroded, the paint is peeling. It doesn't have the proper hardware, it doesn't open it up. So we're gonna address that by taking the door off, replacing the rollers, sanding, priming, and painting the door, new all grip. We're gonna get everything cleaned up, rolling good. We're gonna lubricate the tracks. We're gonna get that opening and closing. We're gonna put new hardware in there. We're gonna put a brand new locking mechanism so we can open and close it. And it should slide open with ease and close with ease so it doesn't have that problem anymore. So the underwater lights that he has now, they seem to be good for 2007. We're gonna take the existing lights that he has out of there now. We're gonna probably put some new underwater light a nice bronze bezel with the glass LED lights there that have several different colors. So we're gonna light up the bottom for him. We're gonna put the headlights in the front and he's not gonna have any problems with not seeing at night and he's gonna have a lot of LED light flashing showing him where he's going when he's underway. At night, the water is black and the sky is black and it's pitch dark out there and you can't see anything. So the captain doesn't let anybody go forward on the boat because you can't see nothing. You don't know whether they're falling in the water or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix that with spreader lights, which is going to give us a lot of light up forward, magnify the size of that area, and light up the whole forward. So not only when he's running now, he's got lights up in the bow, but he has lights up on the spreader now that shine down and out to the side and will light up that whole deck which would be more comfortable and more safe for the captain because he can now see in an area he couldn't see before. When we also got this boat, we noticed that a lot of the deck hatches were leaking water into them, the dogs were broken, you couldn't turn them, the acrylic on top of them was all like crystallized. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these hatches and we're gonna take them out and replace them with brand new hatches, brand new locking mechanism, and we're gonna make it a little bit darker. We're gonna use like a 30% gray tint. And then we're gonna water test it and put new gaskets down so make sure you got a good compression. So when the guy's hosing off his boat or you go through a storm or it's raining, you don't have water leaking into the boat. When we're done with that, we're also gonna go on the underside and put what's called a sunshade kit on there. So you can just be laying in your bed and close that and have no light or open it up but have a little bit of light. So that will fix the problem from the leaky hatches that he has right now on the deck. All the electronics on Aria seem to be out of date. They're working, but they're old. So all the electronics will be getting upgraded. So everything's gonna to be touchscreen, a lot easier to use. We've seen is a chunk of the foam core and the fiberglass missing out of the rudder. So what we're doing right now is we're grinding all of that out. We're fabricating a new core piece. We're gonna glue that and epoxy that in and then stagger laminates on the outside of that rudder. So the owner recommended that we make some kind of stainless 
that tapers like this that we could put on the leading edge of the rudder so that when stuff comes under the boat, it doesn't slice the rudder apart. The sharp stainless will cut whatever it is and just make it flow backwards. And your rudder is protected because anything that gets sucked in under the boat is basically going to get cut by that sharp stainless Ginsu knife kind of deal. And that is just a perfect solution to what the problem was from the beginning. So Roger from Nansen Underwood is going to come out and do a rigging inspection on area and check all the standing rigging and the stays and the sails and the mast and the boom. And then we're going to obviously get whatever needs to be uh, maintained or replaced and he can go and sail in the Keys. The last thing we would like to do is we're going to paint the hulls for him, see if we can make this boat pop. He is a charter boat, so we want to make sure that when he goes back to Key West, it just pulls people's attention. The sun from the ultraviolet rays had just basically oxidized and just faded this whole gel coat. There wasn't a shiny spot at the boat. It had stress cracks everywhere. If you can imagine all these different colors and cracks and fiberglass cracks all throughout the hull on the port and starboard side and the transom and the sugar scoops and going up onto the deck. So really, instead of spending all of this material time on little touch-ups that you gotta fix, do the body work, put fiberglass on it, clean it up, match the gel coat for that area because it's all different colors like a zebra, spray it, wet sand and polish it. You got 40 to 50 areas per side. That's going to be three quarters of a new paint job anyways. So I suggested to the owner that we change the color so you don't look like every other catamaran on the water, white, and we put a nice metallic baby blue on there with clear. We put a white stripe, a new name. It will improve not only the value of the vessel, but the look. Everybody will know that that's that boat when it's out on the water, because it's not like every other catamaran you see, white. People tell me I can't. I always know I can. Everybody has moments of doubt. I don't. When we took down the scaffolding in that tent and all these other yacht services and people and brokers looked at that boat, it was like something came, like a flying star just came out of the clouds. Baby blue metallic hull, all nice and white. I promise you this, guys, you will never see a 42 Lagoon that looks like Aria. Quite a bit of work has been done on this boat in a relatively short amount of time. And little by little, that giant punch list that seemed so daunting just a few weeks ago is starting to seem like it might actually be doable, on time and on budget. <laughs>